As we know and as we've discussed before, the economy is a top issue as we head into November. And March's CPI report found inflation was worse than anticipated for the fifth month in a row. What does this mean for President Biden? Well, I, you and I have had this conversation. I've done this before. It's really not inflation. It really is affordability. In the end, when people go to the store and they realize that they can't get that package of meat, they're not saying, oh, my God, look at that inflation. They're saying, I can't afford that. Food and fuel matter most. Housing and health care also matter a tremendous degree. And in all four of those places, higher prices are affecting people's quality of life all across the country. And unlike unemployment, that affects those people without a job and their family members, inflation, affordability affects everyone. So I think that this is a big voting issue. And I think this is one of the reasons why Trump has been tied with or even ahead of Joe Biden in those key swing states. Yeah, a recent uh, uh, Wall Street Journal poll found Trump winning Arizona, Michigan, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and tied with Biden in Wisconsin. So he's tied in one winning one of uh, six of those key battleground states. Frank, can you read the tea leaves for us? What does this mean seven months out? Well, since that poll's been done, there have been several others that show Biden catching up to or coming close to Donald Trump. We're going to spend over $2 billion on negative ads in those seven states, targeting 5% of the people in those states who might possibly change their minds. So if you're in one of those states, God help you. Every time you turn on the TV and it's going to start shortly, all you're going to get is negative ads about the two candidates, and it's just going to be awful. For everybody else, we're not even going to see the campaign. The candidates aren't going to show up. If you live in New York, the only way you're going to see a candidate is if they're in New York City to raise money. If you're in California, don't be surprised if you see Democrats in L.A. and San Francisco and no place else, they're there to raise money. For Republicans, to see them down in Texas and Dallas and Houston, again, just to raise money. I think it's going to be a nail biter. I'm already trying to speak to secretaries of state, and I hope that they hear this message here, because how they count the votes are going to matter. If it takes them days for an election this close, it's going to jeopardize the public's confidence in the results. It's going to play into those who, who advocate conspiracy about stolen votes. Uh, I think we're not going to know on election day who's going to win, and I don't think we're going to know the day after either. And God help us. It's going to be a nail biter. It is basically Groundhog Day of 2020. What do you think some messages that we learned last time that we can implement now? And I want to know that for the media, too. I mean, what do you think? Have they learned anything from four years ago? No. No, they haven't. Why, is, why does it take so long in Pennsylvania to count your ballots? Florida gets it done in four or five hours. Why does Pennsylvania take days? Why does California, why are we still getting votes in on Saturday and Sunday in that state? Are you stupid? I know exactly what I'm saying. To the voters of Pennsylvania, you're not stupid. To the Secretary of State, get your act together. You have to count the absentee ballots ahead of time. You have to at least process it. And if you don't do it, then you're going to be responsible. I don't know who the name of the person is. If I did, I'd say it right now. You're going to be responsible for the shit show. You can bleep that out. That's going to happen in America. I hold the Secretary of State of Pennsylvania personally responsible. Fix your laws. Fix your counting or be prepared to be responsible for the greatest political shit show in American history. You think I'm that this is <laughs> I know you No, and you think that this is going to be more climatic than 2020? It could be because we didn't expect what happened in 2020. We're all prepared for it in 2024. <laughs> in 2020 it just happened. In 2024, we're going to seek to make it happen if we think our side lost. 